Let me guess, you've got your eyes on the shiny new M2 MacBook Air. Well, not shiny if you fancy the matte black one, but that's not the point. I know you've probably got it in your cart already and you're getting ready to check out, but wait just a moment, because you might be making a mistake. Let's get one thing straight right from the get-go. This machine is not for everyone. For example, if you've already got an M1 MacBook Pro, then I have no idea why you're watching videos like this. But still keep watching this one. Please. The M1 chip is just about two years old at this point, and any M1 user can tell you that it revolutionized mobile computing when it came out. So it only makes sense for the M2 chip to get a lot of people's hearts pumping. I know your pants get a little tighter in the front just thinking about this device. Edgy. I'm fairly certain it's not just MacBook Air users who are considering upgrading to the M2 MacBook Air. I know a good number of Windows users and Intel MacBook users who are finally considering getting a device powered by Apple's M line of chips. But the M2 MacBook Air isn't the only Apple Silicon device available, is it? We've still got the M1 MacBooks, the M1 Pro, the M1 Max MacBooks, the M1 Mac Studio, the Mac Mini, you get the gist. So with so many options to choose from, what makes the M2 MacBook Air so special? Who is it for and why should you buy it? Or better yet, why shouldn't you buy it? If you're still rocking an Intel-based MacBook, be it the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Air is positioned enticingly enough for you to make the switch. No one is sure whether Apple is throttling the Intel MacBooks or not, but they've clearly been suffering from some performance issues for a while. My good friend Alex from Alex Gear and Tech covered some of the issues plaguing the Intel MacBooks in my M1 MacBook Pro review so you can check out his channel linked in the description. And you can go take a look at that video in case you're still curious about the M1 MacBook Pro. One thing a lot of people are going to make their purchase decision based on is how the specs of the M2 MacBook Air compare to those of the M1 MacBook Air. The first thing you probably noticed is the new design. It's a bit of a departure from the old MacBook Air design, which was more wedge-like, the M2 MacBook Air on the other hand is more boxy, keeping in line with the design changes seen on the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks. It has the same two Thunderbolt ports from the previous gen, but now it has the inclusion of a MagSafe charging port, which is decently fast as well, charging up your laptop to 50% in 30 minutes, if you opt for the MagSafe version of course. Yes, yes, there are different configurations for this device, and as expected, if you're a bit too generous with your clicking around on the Apple website, then your wallet is gonna suffer for it. And speaking of wallets, this video was sponsored by... Nah, I'm just kidding. Gotcha though. No one wants to sponsor my tiny channel, but that's okay, I've got you guys, which is the most important. So do me a solid and hit those like and subscribe buttons, and leave a comment below telling me which laptop you are currently using. Okay, so taking a look at performance, which is arguably the most important thing to consider, there are quite a number of differences between the M1 and the M2 MacBook Air. According to Apple's very detailed and informative charts, heavy sarcasm there. They're just a bunch of straight lines and curvy lines. The M2 processor is able to deliver 18% better CPU performance at the same power consumption level, 35% better graphics performance, and twice the bandwidth. The brand new media engine on the M2 chip can also handle multiple streams of 8K video footage. But let's be real, if editing 8K footage is part of your day-to-day -day activities, then are you really looking at a MacBook Air? Probably not. But it's nice to have all that power at your disposal anyways. I know the M2 MacBook Air is looking more and more enticing, but I promise you there are reasons I said you shouldn't buy it. Just stay with me. You get smaller bezels translating to an extra 0.3 inches of screen real estate, which isn't a lot. But hey, every inch matters, right? That's what she said. <laughs> you also have up to 10 core GPU, which exceeds the M1's cap of 7 cores and you get up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory as opposed to 16 gigabytes on the M1 chip. For what it's worth, you also get a new 1080p webcam on the M2 MacBook Air in contrast to the 720p webcam on the M1 MacBook Air. Still on the small details, the M2 MacBook Air has a new sound system with four speakers instead of two, and despite all these new additions, it comes in slightly lighter than the M1 MacBook Air at 2.7 pounds, rather than 2.8 pounds. And now that we're done with that, we can finally get into why I don't think this new M2 MacBook Air is for everyone. And I really hope there are still some people watching at this point. Let's take a look at the biggest and the most obvious advantage the M1 MacBook Air has, and that's with regards to the price. You can get an M1 MacBook Air base model on Apple's website for just $9.99. I say just like I have money, but I'm actually broke as f 
And to be able to get a whole laptop with the incredibly powerful M1 chip for about $1,000 is an amazing deal. You could pay more than that for an iPad Pro, and a Pro or Pro Max iPhone costs over $1,000 as well. But just because the new M2 chip is out doesn't mean the M1 chip has become obsolete. It still runs circles around most, if not all, Intel or AMD chips on the market, and most laptops capable of even catching up to the M1 MacBook Air cost well over $1,000. So with regards to performance, the M1 chip is still quite a bit ahead of the competition, so don't go thinking you're getting a slow laptop if you don't buy the M2 MacBook Air. Aside from the fact that the M1 chip still performs well, I believe the M2 MacBook Air is a bit overpriced for what it really is. Increasing the RAM to 24GB on the M2 MacBook Air takes the price up by $400, and maxing out the storage with a 2TB SSD will add another $600 to your bill. And just like that, you've sent your wallet into a coma. I hope you enjoy eating instant noodles for the rest of the year. With the $2,500 or so you'd be paying for a specced out M2 MacBook Air, you could easily get an M1 Pro or even M1 Ultra MacBook Pro, which is more suitable for heavy tasks like video editing or photo editing seeing as it has a better cooling system with dedicated fans. Whereas the M2 MacBook Air has only fans, I mean no fans. Let's be honest, if the only thing we considered when buying devices were the specs, then everyone would buy a Samsung or Xiaomi phone because they have the best specs on paper. But no, a very important thing to consider when buying a new device is the user experience. So who are you? I mean, what kind of user are you? We know the MacBook Air series was designed for more casual users like students, and that's why it has lower specs than the MacBook Pros, and it's considerably cheaper as well. I don't think I know any power users who own a MacBook Air. I mean, except my friend Fenson, and boy oh boy has he put that thing through the ringer. Yee. But more likely than not, the typical MacBook Air buyer would want something that's easy to carry around, good for day-to-day -day activities like replying emails, watching videos, typing out documents, web browsing, etc. They would want something that does all of this really smoothly and doesn't break the bank at the same time. And if you fall into this category, then the M1 MacBook Air is still more than sufficient. It's cheaper, powerful enough, and still gets you into the Apple Silicon ecosystem. But there's another group of buyers who upgrade for the sake of having the latest and greatest device at all times. And hey, I'm not judging, this is a no judgment zone. You want all the new features of the M2 chip as well as the new design so that everyone knows that you've got the latest model. I don't see anything wrong with that if it genuinely makes you happy and you can afford it. Emphasis on if you can afford it. Please do not go and sell your liver because you want to buy an M2 MacBook Air. I know it's important, but it's not that important. And if you're someone who's already got a great desk setup or a really powerful machine at your desk, like a 16-inch MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio, and you just want a secondary device to take with you so you can do some work while you travel or while you're on the go, then the M1 MacBook Air should more than suffice as that secondary device until you can get back to your primary workstation. I mean, who would spend above $3,000 on a really nice workstation and then spend $2,500 on an M2 MacBook Air? If you have money and you don't know what to do with it, please send it to me. But seriously though, the M1 MacBook Air should more than suffice for the majority of use cases I mentioned earlier, but let me know what you think in the comment section right below the like button. And if you enjoyed this video, then you can check out one of my other videos in this playlist, or you can check out a video by my friend Fenson. It's right here. But before you do that, subscribe to the channel.